Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a relatively new study, a somewhat exciting study, that essentially created tractor beams, as demonstrated in the video you see right here. The laser moves the object. Although in this case it doesn't just move the object, it pulls it toward the laser itself, attracting it in the process, or acting as the term itself suggests, a tractor beam, which is actually the original term, which eventually became shortened to the tractor beam. And even though, like many of you, I originally thought that this was from Star Trek, that's not entirely true. This was originally used in a science fiction novel by E.E. E. Smith, Space Hounds of IPC, a tale of interplanetary corporation, with the idea of tractor beam adapted to a lot of other science fiction, including Star Trek, afterwards. But before I explain to you what the scientists did in this particular study, I wanted to also briefly explain why the idea of tractor beam technology is actually so exciting. Or basically the idea behind some kind of a light beam pulling on the object and trying to attract it toward a certain point. And that's because the opposite of this is not very difficult to achieve. Pushing on the object with the light is definitely quite possible with even just a typical laser. Here's actually a very common example that you can find in the description below. This is by NASA itself. And in this case, this is our repulsor beam. Or basically, the light from the laser gives this object quite a lot of momentum, pushing it in the process, allowing this object to move and to accelerate with time. This is of course what we expect of light, knowing what we know about light. And so none of this is surprising at all. And so for example, the idea of solar sails is entirely based on light pushing on something because photons contain momentum. And so if we can actually focus some of this light and use lasers to then try to push solar sails, these sails could then, in theory, reach ridiculous speeds. But that's pushing, or laser repulsion, that's not particularly difficult. But how would you attract an object using a laser? Or using anything else for that matter as well? Well, there have been some tricks here and there, and the scientists have been actually developing these tricks for a very long time. Here's one of the earlier examples using water waves. In this case, by generating a certain type of waves, it becomes possible to attract the object through the interaction of these waves with the shape on the water itself. And in theory, this is possible to recreate using other types of objects and other types of waves. And that of course includes waves of light. And so very similar types of attraction have been achieved with extremely small particles. It's not entirely clear how this can be used just yet, but some scientists have suggested we can maybe use this to, for example, clean pollution in the air. More importantly though, it seems to work with certain types of laser beams. But there are a lot of other effects and a lot of other phenomena that can be used for similar principles. And that's pretty much exactly what was done in this experiment, allowing the scientists to actually manipulate an object that's much larger. In this case, I believe it's about 15 centimeters in length. And that by itself is a pretty big breakthrough. It's technically the first time ever that a macro object has been physically manipulated producing the effects that we can technically describe as a tractor beam, a laser attracting the object toward it, but using a very different principle and using extremely specific conditions. So here's how this was done and here's sort of how it works. Now in a lot of other cases using lasers, normally this relies on the idea of momentum delivered by photons themselves. But in this case, the scientists use the other phenomenon. Lasers also deliver energy. They can basically heat up an object and this heat can then be used as a kind of a propulsion. They used a much less known phenomenon known as the Knudsen force. A force that usually appears when you have two different materials very close to one another, and in this case these two materials will usually have different heat properties. And when one of the materials starts to heat up a little bit more than the other, it starts to produce a force that then, in theory, can move this object. Ok, it might become a little bit more clear if we actually analyze what the scientists did exactly. They made a material containing two different layers. One of them was made out of graphene, and the other one was made out of silicon oxide. Or in other words, glass. And glass in this case lets quite a lot of laser light through. Which makes one of the sides warm up much faster, and in this case it's the side facing away from the laser. But they then also lowered the atmospheric pressure to 5 pascal. Not really vacuum, but definitely much lower than pressure on Earth. It's actually even lower than pressure on Mars. And so in these low air pressure conditions, they were then able to observe the laser pulling on the object and actually physically moving it, as seen in this video right here. And so this is something that's easily achievable if the right material is used and, if present, in somewhat low atmospheric conditions. But in this case this would not work in all conditions. The force generated directly depends on the gas pressure and the heat difference between two different layers. 
with the scientists definitively establishing that a very low pressure of 5 Pascal seems to produce the highest effect, and the more difference in heat there is between layers, the more propulsion is produced as well. But I guess more intriguingly, the pressure is not coming from the photons or from the light, it is coming from the surrounding molecules that because of the heat difference end up exerting more pressure on one side. But more intriguingly, the actual force generated is something like a thousand times higher than the pressure exerted by the laser itself. So this seems to be a very efficient technique to move objects around. And so in other words, even though the pushing power of laser might be relatively low, this technique seems to dramatically increase the overall pressure generated as a result of heat. But once again, it's unlikely to work in those situations. As a matter of fact, it's unlikely to work in typical atmospheric conditions on planet Earth, even if we use the same setup. But according to the scientists in this paper, Mars potentially has necessary conditions to actually use this phenomenon. The atmospheric pressure here is pretty low, and so in theory, it might be able to manipulate objects using lasers from really far away distances by using some kind of a remote probe. And so by using laser technology, and by using certain types of graphene, it may become possible to pull things around Mars without the physical presence by using typical lasers, although in this case it's not entirely clear how this could be used just yet. This could also potentially be used in the upper atmosphere of planet Earth, and that's actually where we can maybe even test this in some near future, but at this stage it's just a proof of concept. It looks like it's possible to pull objects using lasers if they are in low enough pressure conditions and if you have two materials that heat up at very different levels. And so this is definitely not Star Trek yet. We don't really have the ability to create a large tractor beam usable in vacuum in order to move large objects or large spaceships around. But baby steps. It looks like we can use lasers to pull objects of certain properties in certain conditions. Which is sort of how a lot of other optical technologies started as well. For example, the optical tweezers that are currently used in various scientific and medical fields, including manipulation of small molecules like DNA or small bacteria, also started with a small discovery years ago and eventually led to the Nobel Prize in 2018. So for all we know, maybe this is something similar. But I guess we're not going to know until future studies and until future discoveries. Still pretty cool stuff and pretty exciting. On that note, once we learn something else or once the scientists develop something different, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.